Ed is a polarizing Street Fighter character as some fans are immediately intrigued by his psycho power infused boxing design while others put him on the blander side of the spectrum. Part of the reason for this has to be the timing and context of his debut in Street Fighter V, which saw him as one of the increasing number of characters whose backstory was yet another replacement body for M. Bison, as well as the simple fact that he just wasn't very strong gameplay-wise out of the gate. <laughs> Ed has grown on fans, however, and we know that Capcom has him slated to be the next DLC character to join Street Fighter VI's roster this winter. What's more, Ed actually has a super interesting backstory that, if I'm being honest, had me super hyped to play him until he was actually released and we got to see his final form. Capcom is giving Ed another shot, and so we will too as we take a look at his full story leading up to Street Fighter VI. Before we do, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more Street Fighter videos just like this one. Though he was first playable in Street Fighter V, Ed actually appeared earlier in Street Fighter IV, and really, his story starts with Balrog. Balrog is put in charge of watching over M. Bison's latest clone body project, which mainly includes an assembly line of Seths. However, there are a few unique bodies in the mix as well. The not-so-nuanced boxer realizes how much time and money went into creating said bodies, and if Bison is putting one of his top guys in charge of security over them, reasons that they must be worth a ton of cash. Bison is temporarily taken out of the picture and Seth takes over, but when the Street Fighter IV boss is defeated and the Sin Laboratories are destroyed, Balrog discovers one of the bodies not only intact, but alive. Said body is just a small, feeble boy with head bandages and a barcode tattooed on his left arm. When Rog asks what his special powers are, the boy replies that he really can't do anything on his own. Still, Balrog picks the boy up and carries him from the rubble, hoping to make a few bucks on him at some point. If you hadn't already put it together, this boy is Ed. Now it turns out that Ed wasn't actually created in Bison's labs, but was abducted at an extremely young age and subjected to vicious tests and experiments, the effects of which would become increasingly apparent over time. One such effect is that Ed grows at an incredibly rapid rate, needing new clothes almost constantly. He's also plagued by nightmares, wherein he feels completely paralyzed and like his body isn't his own. And these nightmares are actually a result of being haunted as the ghost of M. Bison tries to possess him. He and Balrog travel everywhere together, and the latter has clearly become something of a paternal figure, as surprising as that sounds. The rapid aging scares Ed, and he notes that he hopes it stops before he grows super old, as he'd hate to have Balrog playing nursemaid for him, specifically helping him go to the bathroom. The idea of Balrog caring for anyone in this manner is all but impossible to even envision, but herein lies what gives Ed's story the majority of its intrigue. It sees Balrog become a real human being for the first and only time thus far in Street Fighter. Ed will actually stop growing once he reaches prime fighting age, but he doesn't know that, and Rog has at least given Ed the impression that he would indeed stick around and care for him should the situation call for it. Ed is randomly visited by the fortune teller in training, Manat, and she tells him that she senses immense power locked inside of him and foreshadows that he and Balrog will eventually have rough times ahead. As his nightmares grow more intense, so do Ed's emerging psycho powers as he's able to enhance his kicks and his punches with energy. It's at about this point that Street Fighter V's main story, A Shadow Falls, plays out, and Ed makes a few non-impactful appearances in a handful of Balrog scenes, but could pretty easily be written out without changing the plot. He does do one thing of canonical significance during this window, however, as he rescues fellow Shadowloo child captive, Falk. Though they're not technically related, these two prove to be all but siblings as they share a ton in the way of both origin story and physical appearance. The Shadowloo base is destroyed by Team Good Guys, and the Ghost of Bison manifests once again in Ed's dreams. And though Ed is once again able to fight off the Spectre, he decides it's safer for Balrog if he's not nearby when those inevitable rough times foretold by Monat roll around, as he assumes this implies Bison will eventually be successful in possessing him. Ed leaves the tent they're sharing to run off alone, but Rog wakes up and pursues, confronting Ed in front of a nearby waterfall. When Ed tells Rog why he's leaving, the boxer says Ed isn't strong enough to hurt him and calls him a chump who should shut up and follow orders. 
Ed recalls some of the past moments the two shared in training and growing together, but his pride gets the better of him and the two fight as Rog tries to prove his statements are true. Ed wins the exchange, and a defeated and tearful Balrog sits on the ground facing away from his former protege. Though he tries to maintain his usual walls of toughness and anger as he screams at Ed to get lost, get lost! his wobbling and shaky voice betrays him and it's clear that Rog cares for Ed and doesn't want him to leave. In what has to be one of the most emotional moments in Street Fighter history, admittedly not a high bar there, Ed leaves behind his only friend and father figure. Some months pass and Ed finally reaches his peak physical form and stops growing. He teams back up with Falk, who has become quite the formidable warrior herself, as well as two other Shadaloo experiment characters who were infused with various aspects of Bison's psychopower abilities. The first is a tall man with notably curly hair that we don't know the name of, but who has the power to teleport. And the other is a sentient gorilla named Baba Mwalimu, who boasts wisdom and high intelligence. This group is known as Neo Shadaloo, with Ed serving as the leader of the pack. Neo Shadaloo is very anti-original Shadaloo in its purposes, and the group's general mission is to find and help fellow victims of Shadaloo experiments and stop similar criminal organizations from harming the world. Though this is fairly noble, it seems as though the group may not be above harming others to achieve its overall goals. In Street Fighter VI, Neo Shadaloo hires Jury to capture Bosch and perform psychopower experiments on him so that they can try to use him to stop JP's evil scheme via a kamikaze bombing. This ultimately results in Bosch's death, obviously, though JP is thwarted. Tactics like these indicate that Neo Shadaloo prioritizes hurting Shadaloo or other criminal organizations over saving individual lives, which isn't nearly as evil in nature as the plots and plans M. Bison formally came up with, but it certainly does leave some room for moral questioning. And that's about the last we've heard from Ed thus far, but his story will continue as he's on his way to Street Fighter VI's character select screen, and so we wonder, what might Capcom do with him next? They've already got a clear direction as he's leading an entire group of interesting characters, though almost none of the fighters Ed has previously associated with, Balrog, Falk, Bison, or even Monat, are currently in Street Fighter VI. In Aki's arcade ending, she meets up with JP to cryptically discuss future plans surrounding Shadaloo, essentially warning him not to interfere as Fong has plans for bringing it back. She also knows that they're tracking down remnants of Shadaloo and mentions Ed by name. JP plays dumb, but everyone knows better than to trust that, and so it seems Capcom will be bringing these characters together for Ed's SF6 debut. Whatever they wind up doing, we hope that Balrog is brought in to be a part of it, as his relationship with Ed has so much potential for change and evolution, and we'd really like to see that fleshed out further. If you are entertained or informed by this, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. We've got plenty more character stories like this one in our Stories Thus Far playlist, so be sure to check those out after you drop a comment letting us know your hopes for Ed in Street Fighter VI. I've been John Velociraptor Guerrero for Event Hubs. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.